Welcome to Dr. Karen Health Talks. I'm Dr. Karen and I hope you listened to my last podcast. I talked all about the microbiome diet, permanent secrets to weight loss. And I've had so many comments and questions, which makes me happy because that means you're listening and you're making changes. So make sure you check that one out. And I have something truly exciting to bring to you today and I'm going to talk all about the blue zones. Have you heard about the blue zones? The blue zone is actually a a non-scientific term but it's uh, given to specific geographic regions in the world that are home to some of the world's oldest people but not just old, happy because I don't know about you but uh, as I grow older, happiness is an important component of that. I don't want to just grow older. I want to be happy and vital. So these people are vital, they're happy, and they have the longest longevity. So there are six secrets I'm going to share with you about these blue zones. Now you probably can guess what they are. But, uh, or you just know because you've heard about the Blue Zones, but I'm going to just review these six secrets and maybe there's some things you can integrate into your life because you know I always like to bring you action-oriented information. So uh, do you know what the Blue Zones are? Actually, you know why they're called Blue Zones? I'm just going to give you this little bit of trivia because I thought, okay, so what's so significant about blue, but it turns out that Dan Butner, who is actually the guy that wrote the book called The Blue Zones, he and his colleagues are the ones that were were searching for these areas and did the research, and they drew blue circles around the locations on the map. So it was just the color they drew of the places that they identified, so that's why they're called the blue zones. So now you know. Let me tell you what the Blue Zones are, because just hearing these names gets me excited about going to all these places. The first one's in Greece, Ikaria in Greece, and it's an island in Greece where people eat a Mediterranean diet, rich in olive oil, red wine, and homegrown vegetables. I know that'll make you happy. The second one is in Sardinia, Italy. Now, this region is home of some of the oldest men in the world, and they actually live in mountainous areas where they typically work on farms, so that's a hint. They're working, they're moving, their daily life is full of activity, and they drink lots of red wine. (laughs) And then the third one is in Japan, Okinawa, Japan, and it's home of some of the oldest women in the world. They eat a lot of soy-based foods, which is really interesting because soy gets a a bad rap. But in the Western cultures, soy is often genetically modified. But these women eat a lot of soy-based foods and they practice Tai Chi, a meditative form of exercise. The fourth one is in Costa Rica. Nicoya Peninsula in Costa Rica and the Nicoyan diet is based around beans and corn tortillas. The people in this area regularly perform physical jobs and they work way into their old age and here's a big one that's part of the six secrets. They have an actual name for their life purpose and their life purpose is known as Plan de vida, plan de vida, (laughs) and life purpose. Oh, that's a big one. We'll come back to that. And the fifth location I have to say is in California, USA, and it's in Loma Linda, California. Uh, Loma Linda is a Seventh day Adventist community, and the Seventh day Adventist people are very religious people, and they're also very strict vegetarians and they live tight knit communities very close okay so there are regions that are called the blue zones so now you know 
Now you know why they're called blue zones, because they made a blue mark on the map around these locations. Now let me reveal the six secrets, because as you know, my podcasts are very short. They're action-driven, but giving you little snippets of information to get you educated and aware and make changes in your life. So here are the six secrets. The first one, it's a specific diet that is plant-based whole foods, plant-based. And as you could hear from the different locations, very much in line with their natural environment, seasonal vegetables grown right there where the body and our own microbiome is used to the soil and the environment. So eat a whole food, plant-based diet. They also fast Uh, which means either intermittent fasting or fasting for a day. And we know that uh, caloric restriction is one of the most well-known scientific facts of increasing longevity, of reducing calories, which puts less strain on the body and allows our cells to live longer. So not that we're talking about caloric restriction, but fasting for periods of time is something that these zones do practice and in different ways. There's no one way to fast. As you know, I did a podcast all about intermittent fasting, which has become very popular here in the Western world. But these people have practiced fasting all their lives in different ways. And number three, they consume alcohol in moderation. Because you heard many of the places and it's usually red wine the polyphenols and antioxidants in red wine. So those just briefly are some of the specific diet secrets, but it goes further than that. The second secret is exercise is built into their daily life. Exercise is not something that they do for an hour on a treadmill and then they sit for the rest of the day using their devices, which is a very Western world practice. Exercise or physical activity, maybe a better word, is built into their daily life. Number three, they get enough sleep. You know, the research on sleep and longevity and sleep and chronic disease is so strong. So they get good quality sleep. Number four, they have a healthy social network. Did you hear what I said about the Loma Linda community having a very tight social community? We are social beings and in this very fast western world where people wake up in the morning, they get in their car in their garage, they open their garage door, they drive to work, put their garage door down, they sit on the freeways for an hour, maybe two hours, they go into their office, put their head at the computer and then the end of the day they turn around and do the same thing. We are very closed off and many people don't live in the communities, of course, that they grew up in. Hey, I'm one of those. I'm a transplant from Australia. Uh, my, one of the things I'm so grateful for is I live in a community in a street that we have lived together now for 30 years. The same neighbors, all the kids have grown up together. I know that is a precious, priceless gift and it is such a joy to have a family or a social network that has become a family. And this is so important. And we have a lot of mental health disease now in our country. And a lot of it is from social isolation. It's from devices where people have become friends with people on devices. And it's replaced true friends where we actually look in each other's eyes and share our lives. So having a strong, healthy social network. And there's been books, many books written about it. One of my favorite is Dean Ornish's book called Love and Survival. Dean Ornish, you remember Dean Ornish? He's a cardiologist that wrote Reversing Heart Disease. And he talks about how we can open up our heart through intimacy, connections, um, through, of course, meditative practices like um, yoga and relaxation techniques and sharing our lives, literally opening up our hearts, figuratively, metaphorically, and physically. So I'm, I want to really stress that because sometimes it doesn't get as much airplay as the nutritional aspect of health, but it is so important to have a good social network. 
Maybe you have an exercise class. I go to an exercise class every morning and I see the same people. And if I don't see people for a while, we start to think, oh, wonder what's happened. And we reach out to them. There are many ways to create that social network. Okay, and number five, do you remember I talked about Costa Rica and Plan de Vida, a life purpose? Well, that's number five. They have a life purpose. Now, it may not be a grand one about going to the moon, but it's a life purpose that's meaningful to them in their daily life, getting up every day and having something meaningful to do and a contribution to make. And and the other thing is ageism. Many of these countries revere the aged, whereas here in our Western culture, we tend to just kind of push them aside and they don't have any use anymore. So as we age, we become less important. And that is so devastating to our, our soul, to our emotional health, and to our physical health. So really recognizing that our aged have really stories to tell, very special roles to play in the structure and fabric of our society and our culture and our social network. So having a life purpose. And you might want to get the book Blue Zones and read in more depth about these amazing uh, locations and these amazing people because we do have a lot to learn. And the final one, they are religious and or spiritual. Now, I mentioned that with Loma Linda, that they are a deeply spiritual group of people or religious group of people. And uh, whether you choose religion or spirituality, what that means is having a purpose bigger than just yourself. Why are you here? Are you an accident that you just got planted on the earth and you have this short lifespan and, and it just ends? Or is there some bigger purpose. I guess it ties in a lot to the life purpose and and it's very personal. So in no way am I going to lecture anybody about choosing their religion or their spirituality. Uh, But I do know and I do know that to deal with the difficulties that we have from day to day about just being human, it really helps to have a faith or a way of thinking and or belief that helps us see bigger than the situation at hand. And I will just throw out right now, because right now in the world, my homeland is under fire. And as you all know, I come from Australia. And it is devastating in every way, in watching the images and knowing how people are suffering. And what I want to do is hold a higher vision that I know that the Australians will come through this, that there is a light, there is a meaning, there is a way to come through this bigger. And when I see the kindness, when I see the compassion, when I see the firefighters coming from California, flying to Australia to support the cause, and I see the amazing human beings helping those animals, it gives me hope. So that's what I mean by not being caught up in, of course, bad things happen. They do, we're human. But having a hope, having a bigger vision, holding on to something, just even if it's a little bit of the the belief, the seeing the kindness and focusing on the kindness and the compassion and, and the bigness of the human spirit. So I will leave you with that today. I love sharing My personal story, along with these amazing creating health opportunities that I share in in my health talks. And I hope you will continue to follow me and listen to other podcasts and stay with me as we journey through the amazing uh, health insights that are, it's a journey. We don't just begin and end. It, it is a continuous journey, and that's what makes it really exciting for me. So this is Dr. Karen Wolf. I'm glad you have joined me for my Dr. Karen Wolf Health Talks, and particularly today about the Blue Zones. So bye for now. Until next time.